Welcome to the TV broadcast of Accelerate Church. Pastor Jeremy File is teaching his series, Living Biblically. Did you know that doing what God's Word says can change your life? It can transform everything about the way you live. So let's join Pastor Jeremy right now for some instruction about just how to live biblically. If you're going to overcome in every area of life, you're going to have to make sure that you're living biblically in every area. You see, you don't have a successful marriage by accident. Anytime I find someone that's been married 50 plus years, I like to ask them, what is the secret to your success? I've been asking them this for almost 21 years that I've been married. Now, I guess at some point I'll finally get to the place where someone asks me what the secret is. But for now, I'm still in learning mode. What I found out is the, the men, when they're real with me, that have been married over 50 years, they're still in learning mode. That's a key to success right there. Stop thinking you've got women figured out, because you don't, Jack. If your name's not Jack, you know, or if it is, I'm not talking specifically to you, though I am. No one wins a championship by accident. No one lives biblically by accident. So 2023 is the year to be intentional about living biblically. And this. In every area. Let me repeat that. I don't know if you had your ears on there. This is the year to be intentional about living biblically in every area of your life. This starts by guarding where you put your attention. Listen to me. If you don't guard what you give attention to, you create desires that are unnecessary for you to live biblically. You see, anything you give your attention to will cause and create a desire in that area. Now, the truth be known, I, I had a pastor friend of mine that I, you know, I looked up to at one time, and uh, he spent some time with me, and he was the best golfer I've ever been around. And he said, I want you to come out to the hitting range with me. And he watched me, said, I want you to hit a few balls. So I did. And he basically corrected every single thing about where my toes were, where my knees were, the way I was standing. Every little thing you can think of. And I saw that man the other day for the first time in about five years. And I was telling him, I was excited about all you, you know. I said, man, Accelerate Church is popping this. And I said, what about your golf game? I said, you know, the truth is, sir, I've neglected my golf game. I played three times this whole year. He was like, Psh. he was all, dis all disgruntled. You know why? Because he had spent time trying to teach me that, right? He's like, well, you're never going to get better unless you spend time. But the truth be known, because I haven't given my attention to it, I didn't have that strong of a desire this year for it. That's just the truth of the matter. However, here's what I know about myself. If I give my attention to it, it will start to create a desire, and I want to get out there and for some reason go look for a ball I lost again. <laughs> Garrett laughs because he can relate. <laughs> Desires are created in the place we give our attention. And many people give the majority of their attention to their feelings. Therefore, they have a hard time living biblically. You see, no one's going to live by the Bible, by accident. And it starts with this simple little thing of what am I giving my attention to? The Bible's clear where we should give our attention, and it says in Proverbs chapter 4, say, thank God for the word. Thank God for the word. Verse 20, my son. Now, let me just say, anytime I read the word of God and I see something written to my son or my child, you know, or little child is what it says many places. My ears perk up because I say I'm a child of God. Let me just ask you boldly to declare it if you are. How many of you would say you're a child of God? You would claim you're a child of God. Yeah. Okay. This is written right to you then. So people that are children of God are told a command. Give attention to Facebook. But if you use your little app tracker, you'll find you spend at least an hour a day on social media. Some more. Isn't that interesting? There's no verse to do that. There's a verse to give your attention to 
my words. Where are his words found? The B-I-B-L-E. I like this part. It says, incline, bend, prick up your ears. That always makes me think of my dogs when I read that. Prick up your ears. Came home. I told you I was in Wichita Falls. I came home. and My wife said, ah, I didn't get Enoch out there to feed the dogs. Of course, I was only gone for 30 hours, so it's not like they're starving or anything. But I said, okay, I'll feed them. As soon as I get home, I, I go out there. I said, they meet me at the gate. They can look through this gate. And I said, y'all want to eat? And they're all, I came to tell you this morning, do you want to eat? <laughs> the word? Don't let my dogs prick up their ears more than you do when the word's coming forth here. My dogs pricked up their ears for some sloppy, nasty, smelly dog food that they ate. Oh, man, they were, I have to watch them because they'll fight over it, you know. Because they don't like, they, I have to separate them is what I mean. They don't really fight. And, but I have to separate them across the room because I don't want to fight over the food. I thought, what if I went to Accelerate Church and everyone's so hungry for the word, they're like, don't you dare even distract me or talk to me. I ain't got time to make my grocery list right now. That can wait. I ain't got time to watch the pregame and watch the closed captioning right here in church. I ain't got time for that. Y'all think I'm making stuff up. But I know. Worse than that, God knows. Let me ask you a question. When you go out to eat, can you tell if the waiter or waitress is attending to your table well? Can you tell? Have you ever been in a position where, where there's someone and you need something like us needing some napkins because we need extra napkins when you have seven kids? Or when the kids aren't there and it's just the two of us. I thought, I guess I blame all the messes on them, but I need extra napkins and the kids aren't here. But you have to say, excuse me, excuse me, because I mean, they're just, you can thank me later, camera people. For walking that fast, I'm sure they're like, oh, snap. Never know when pastor's going to jump around and act a fool up here. Well, here's the deal. You've been in that position before? Where it's like everything you need, you're like, yeah, yeah. It's, like you, it's like you're trying to chase them down like you're a nuisance almost. Excuse me. And you have to say, sir, sir, sir. The other day I was eating and we needed something. One of the kids needed something. And I was like, ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. I wanted to get real, you know, quieter with it. Ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. Because she did, I mean, she was just a little slower for you back there in the back there. Camera first. I was like, you know, but that's just a waitress at a table. Have you also had an experience where it's like you don't have to ask for nothing? They attend your table so well that, like, every time they're like, oh, here, let, me, let me make sure you got a full cup. It's like you almost have to tell them, okay, thank you. I'm, I'm well. Thank you. That's someone who's attending very well. Now, if I can tell that when I go to eat, do you think the Lord can tell if you're paying attention to his words? On the second and fourth Sunday nights of every month, we have LifeLinks. We gather together with like-minded believers and discuss the current series that Pastor Jeremy is preaching. We have food, we laugh together, we pray together, and we build those godly relationships with our brothers and sisters within the church. We would love for you to join us for LifeLinks. You can find a list of all of our groups along with their locations on our app, our website, or just stop by the desk in the lobby. We have someone there ready to help you find the perfect LifeLink group. Think of all the promises God has already said up front, and yet his children still don't even give a rip about his words. <laughs> Yet he told you, give attention. Why? What you give attention to creates a desire for. He wants you to desire his words. Why? Man can't live by bread alone, but by, out of every word that proceeds out of his mouth. But see, most of humanity doesn't care. They'd rather go eat a taco. It's 1130 Sunday morning. I just woke up. And preacher, if you don't hurry up, I'm just going to exit out because I got a roast cooking. You got to eat me some roast. I know, I know, I know, but, but wait a minute. Does he have your attention? Does his word have your attention? 
Does he have to say your name three or four times before you respond? You remember I told you I've been there? Ma'am, 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 ma'am. Never even heard me. I thought, wow, that's the Lord, I think, so many times. Jeremy, do this. Jeremy, why does he have to repeat himself? I thought I was attending to his words. It's amazing. Listen to me. When you attend to this word and you give your attention and incline your ear to this word, all of a sudden you can more clearly hear the voice of your shepherd. But if you listen to convoluted voices and people that don't even know anything about producing any fruit for the kingdom and listen to their voice and think now you're going to be in touch with the voice of the Spirit of God, you're a confused individual that will live just like my little weenie dog I had growing up chasing its tail all of its life. The most productive thing you'll ever do in the kingdom is chase your tail until you start giving attention to the Word. Prick up your ears. To the word. Make sure in 23 you have a steady diet of the word coming in on a daily basis. You hear me? I'm telling you this as your pastor. Make sure you have a steady diet every day of the word of God coming into your ears. He says in verse number 21, do not let them depart from your eyes. Let them what? The words of God. Don't let them depart from your eyes. In other words, no matter what you go through in life, Don't start looking at people and looking at circumstances and looking at your feelings. That's what you've been giving attention to. So therefore, your desires are all about your feels. Caught up in your feels. Well, that's terrible. They're not a safe God spiritually. They're a safe God in other situations in life. That's why God gave them to you. But they're not a safe God if you're wanting to discern the voice of God. You got that? Well, I feel so strong about this. Your feelings could be lying to you. What you got to do is keep the word, keep your eyes on Jesus, the author, the finisher of your faith. Look what he says. Keep them in the midst of your heart, giving us a very vital clue here. What you look at eventually gets down in your heart. So you need to have this, this thing about you where you never get tired of looking at the word. When you decide to call, hey, I need to meet with pastor, pastor says, well, here's what the scripture says. Oh, yeah, 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 I've already seen the word. Yeah, I've already looked at that. Uh, you should rejoice. Oh, yeah, I need to look at that again. Never get tired of looking at the Word. Why? The Bible tells you to never let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Hey, that word depart means to turn aside. You know, it's real easy if you give all your attention to your feelings to turn aside from the Word. Most people are very well practiced in following their feelings and claiming it's God. But when it comes to what the Word says and actually living biblically, they could give a rip about that and think God doesn't care. Well, even if you find a thousand preachers and then tens of thousands of followers of those preachers to tell you that God doesn't really care, He doesn't really take all that, He's not falling off the throne. While those are little sayings that have some truth to them, what you need to know is that if the Word is not in front of you, then God is probably not on the throne of your heart. If you do what you feel like all the time, Jesus isn't your Lord. No matter what you say with your mouth, Jesus said in Matthew 7, many will come to me on that day and say, Lord, Lord, and talk about everything they did for the Lord, and they'll say, depart, you were lawless. In other words, you did whatever you wanted. You turned aside from the Word. Your eyes weren't focused on the Word. See, what you keep looking at eventually gets down in you. This could be for the positive or the negative. That's why if you're looking at porn, you better repent and stop now. I was telling a couple of Christian brothers this. I said, listen, it's a good thing Joseph wasn't lusting over here on the side because you don't know when Potiphar's wife's going to show up. And if he had had all this secret sin over here nobody knew about and was well practiced in hiding it, then the day Potiphar's wife said, come lie with me, He wouldn't have had the willpower because he had been feeding the different desires, see, by what he gave his attention to. Is it sin? It's sin. I'm not trying to lighten that. But sometimes we don't think about just the logistics of it. You see what I'm talking about? Yeah, sin, sin. You do that. It's wrong. you got to repent. But let me tell you something. The reason people end up getting into adultery and getting into sexual sin is because of what they were doing when nobody was looking and no one was around. And it got down in their heart. Is what you keep looking at gets down. Now, in the positive, you keep looking at the word, what gets down in your heart. The everlasting, 
non-changing word of God. Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away. My words will never pass away. So the eternal power of God can get down on the inside of you. That's the same power that raised Jesus from the dead can be on the inside of you simply by what you give your attention to. And once it gets down on the inside of you, it becomes a part of you. This is where you become one of hell's most wanted. When the Word of God becomes such a part of you, it's just like you introduce yourself, you say your name, and a scripture just comes out. Yeah. But for some people, it's offense. That's what they keep looking at, which turns to bitterness, and then they keep looking at that bitterness. For others, they keep looking at the Word, though, no matter what they feel, no matter what they experience, and what you see is a separation in the spirit. Now listen to what my pastor said. I watched him go through what I did Wednesday night. He has Thursday service, which is, I predict 2023 and beyond. Dr. Mark Barclay, my pastor. He was reading this, and he said the Lord told him that this is the year of separation. Thus the verse, wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate. Separate, 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 says the Lord. Do not touch the unclean thing and I will receive you. Second Corinthians 6, verse 17. That's the scripture for this year right there on the top. And that's not just neat because he printed it out it's on top. It's the year of divine separation. I heard that. I, I, it caught my attention. I mean, it caught my attention. This is the year of separation. There's going to be some things that you're going to have to get out of your life. Accelerate Church places a high priority on instilling God's Word into the heart of the next generation. Our kids' ministry is spreading hope by teaching the Word of God on a level that young ones will understand and take home with them. In Accelerate Kids, your kid will experience awesome praise and worship, illustrated sermons from God's Word, and interactive games in both big and small groups. Serving God is fun, and we would love for your kids to join us at Accelerate. Did you know when you live biblically, you're living healthy? And did you know that healing is biblical? People have this idea that sickness is from God. It's not from God. No. Healing is from God. I say this about healing is biblical because God wants his children walking in health. In 2023, he wants you walking in wholeness and healing not putting up with ailments you've put up with for the last decade or two or even 10 months or 10 minutes. Just because you know some good Christians who are sick or have been sick their whole life or died sick doesn't make it biblical to live with sickness. What does the Bible say about healing? I want to talk about that a little bit this morning because like it or not, you may already be established in this, but the vast majority of the body of Christ doesn't know that healing is biblical. They don't know that it's unbiblical to put up with sickness. They think, well, it's just the chips I've been dealt. It's just the way it is. No, no, that's not the way it is. What does the Bible say? You see, for something to be biblical, you got to have Bible on the matter. Well, 3 John only has one chapter, so verse 2 says, Beloved, pause, anytime you see brethren, Beloved, like I mentioned earlier, little children, my son, my daughters, you know your ears should perk right up. It's written right to you. So, beloved, I pray that you may prosper. Everybody say prosper. prosper. Somebody say, you're going to take up another offering? No. <laughs> but God wants you to prosper. Don't ever let it come out of your mouth again. I don't like the prosperity gospel. You've been listening to too many YouTube preachers. God prospers his children. God owns a cattle on a thousand hills. He uses gold to pave the streets. And you got a problem with them prospering you? That means some wires crossed in you. Now, he don't want you fulfilling everything the lust of the flesh. That's not the point. But what you get through the blessing, you didn't get through lust. What you get through lust, you didn't get through the blessing. He says here, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health. Just as your soul prospers. Boy, this is a key. 
If your soul, your soul is your mind, your will, your emotions, if it's not prospering, then you're not going to prosper and be in health because this is what the Holy Spirit inspired John to write here. He's praying that you would prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. So if you have a sick mind, which is an unbiblical way of thinking, it will lead you to a sick body. And see, it's a sick mind that settles for sickness because it's unbiblical. In the areas of life where you make up your mind, I'm going to follow the word completely with everything I am, you're going to see the fruit of prosperity and the fruit of health. I want you to listen to this. In every area of life where you decide to follow the word completely, you're going to see the fruit of prosperity and the fruit of health in that area. If it's in your marriage, you're going to have a prosperous, healthy marriage. If not, that's evidence to you of what? Well, you haven't followed the word completely in that area. Because if you did, what would be the fruit? Prosperity and health. See how this goes over real big? But this is your help for 2023. Let's just have this mindset this year. If Jesus paid for it, I'm going to walk in it. If he paid for it, I'm going to walk in it. Why would I settle to live below what he paid for? It cost him everything. Well, some people don't understand why he took stripes on his back, why he was beaten the way he was. It was for our transgressions and for our healing, the Bible says. If you read Isaiah 53, you see Isaiah prophesied from before Jesus was here, looking forward, and he made the statement, by the stripes Jesus took. See, we didn't say the name Jesus because it was beforehand. He was prophesying about Jesus. He said, you are healed. Then in 1 Peter 2, 24, you've heard this, hopefully, but today you get to hear it again. It says, who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, now listen to this part. By whose stripes you were healed. So Isaiah looking forward says you are healed by the stripes. Peter looking back after the cross says you were healed. Woo. See this is what the Bible has to say about healing. And it was very costly to Jesus. Understand this. That when Jesus took stripes on his back, most people died when they were beat that way. The Romans normally limited it to 39 stripes, right? That's normally what they did because most men couldn't take it. But did you know Jesus wasn't under that limit constraint? Because Pilate was trying to figure out a way not to crucify him. So I happen to believe that that beating was more severe than most, which was pretty gruesome if you really do a study. In fact, it's very hard to think about, but this morning we need to think about this for this reason. It's unbiblical for us to put up with sickness any longer, and this year in particular, we've got to make war against it. So it's worth us meditating just a little bit here on one of the first Sundays of the year about the cost that it cost Jesus, because when he was beat, he didn't even look human anymore after that beating, because that's what your healing cost him. It cost him that. And most... People say, well, if he wanted me healed, I'd have been healed. Not so. you got to make war with this thing. you got to fight it, just like you do in the areas of life with sin that I referenced earlier. you got to make war with sin. you got to say no to sin. Well, you got to say no to sickness. If a wild dog comes on your property, tries to come in your house, you don't say, go away, Poochie. Go away. But, yeah, that's the way people treat sickness. Some will get special privileges because of their sickness. You'll never get free of it that way. I'm not mad. I love people. But God wants you free from that. See, the higher level of ministry is not always just, you know, treating the sick, but telling them you can be healed. Let me word it this way. It's not a higher ministry to go lay with a leper. It's a higher ministry to lay hands on the leper and cast out leprosy. 
to speak the word and send the word and the word heal you. Psalms 107 we read the other night. Are you following this? So healing is biblical. It's unbiblical. Hopefully this helps tweak the way you look at it to continue to live with sickness. With any malady, any disease, it's unbiblical to go on. If I tell you this, you know, about sin, you agree. You're like, yeah, it's unbiblical. But you got to look at it this way about sickness too. Why? It was his stripes he took. That beating he took. All those jagged pieces of glass and bone that would wrap around his body and literally rip his flesh off. Like tearing paper, basically. I believe bones were exposed. I believe it was horrible. They still wanted to crucify him. The price he paid and to thank his own children still put up with what he paid for. Why? Aaron said it earlier. And I know it's true. You know, once, especially a woman, and some of you are men that, that, that cook real well. But I'm just not, I don't happen to flow in that. <laughs> I make some pretty good grilled cheeses, and that's about it, right? <laughs> Toast a few waffles in the morning, but I mean, my cooking's limited. I can scramble an egg, but, you know. But I watch my wife make stuff, and she learned from her mama. My mom's a good cook, too, but I watch all these People, they go to work, and I know this is true about my mother-in-law in particular. She, she'll work, she'll work. My wife's like this, and they like to serve it hot. Yeah. I, my wife, she'll say, hey, come on. It's hot. It's ready. And if I'm like, hang on just a minute. I'm in the middle of something. That don't ever go over real big. <laughs> I mean, she doesn't say this. I've, it's like she doesn't have to say it. I, I'm, I've, I've wised up in 21 years. I realized. You mean I've been slaving in here over a hot stove? Cooking food for you, and you don't even care to come eat it while it's hot? I could really relate to it when I became senior pastor, and I said, I'm going to preach the Word of God. If people don't come on Sunday, I need to meet with you Tuesday. You missed the hot meal. You want some leftovers? I'll give you some. But boy, if you could have been here to hear it when it was fresh, when the anointing was really, really on me, and you could have had ears to hear, but you were distracted. See, some people's healing, I'm telling you why they don't get it right there. That's why. Well, if I could go find some healing evangelist somewhere and go to that, his meeting, maybe I could get healed there. You don't, you don't need that. You need to understand what you're being, being taught right here today. It's unbiblical to put up a sickness. And it's up to you to put your foot down. Wow, what a powerful, life-changing message when we turn from doing things our own way to doing them God's way. Well, there's more to this message, and if you'd like to hear it in its entirety, it is available on our website at accelerate-church.cc. Or we would love to have you with us in person at Accelerate Church in Amarillo at 4400 South Crockett Street. Our service times are Sunday morning at 10 a.m. and Wednesday at 7 p.m. We would love to see you there. Or we'll see you next time here on the Accelerate Church television broadcast.